What's up guys and welcome to a very special episode of Piston Head Garage. I'm Garrett. And I'm Jacob. And on this episode, we will be building the Cummins Miata Soot Salon. That's right, so behind me is the 97 Miata shell that we're going to be building it on. But uh, I'll let Jacob take you through all of what's going to be done to it. So here's a quick rundown as to everything that we're going to be doing to this NA Miata. So the body is just a 1997 NA Mazda Miata, originally came in blue. We had uh, Inspired Privilege wrap it in 3M Dragonfire Red. Um, as for the engine, it's a 3.9 liter Cummins 4BT, it's a four cylinder. It's very similar to the 12 valve uh, Cummins, but obviously missing two cylinders. A local company named Northern Upfitters has built the whole thing. Uh, the shell was donated by Dave's Garage in Oakville. He's a Miata specialist, so he, uh, he managed to find us a shell really last minute. Uh, other than that, a lot of the upgrades that are going into it, uh, Vibrant Performance is doing all of, the, uh, all of the tubing, AN fittings, lines, intercooler. They, they've donated a ton of stuff to this build. Uh, Lucas Oil is providing all of our fluids for our tools, our transmission, our engine, everything else. Uh, contractor Rental Supplies has given us a lot of tools to work with and fabrication equipment. V8 Roadsters has built the engine cradle, some frame supports, a rear diff brace, uh, amongst other things. Uh, what else? Ground Control and IBOC built a custom set of coilovers for this build. They have 1,200 pound front springs and 700 pound rear springs, as well as Coney struts and uh, Ground Control's uh, in-house built sleeve system that allows for a huge amount of, uh, of, of ride height changes very, very quickly. Uh, for some of the beauty stuff, Nexmod has provided us with a gorgeous front lip, and Carbon Miata has donated a uh, Type 2 wide body kit. On top of that, throughout the drivetrain, Exedi has provided us with a clutch to mate up with the Ford ZF5 transmission out of a Ford F150, and then uh, Lindsay Driveline is providing a custom drive shaft that'll go to our Ford 8.8 .8 rear differential. Some of the other goodies that we've got in here uh, are from Moss Miata uh, down in the States. They've sent us a, uh, a full brake system uh, to upgrade with EBC pads and DBA, which is Disc Brakes Australia rotors, uh, as well as a cobalt upper strut bar that'll be interesting to fit in with it. Uh, Autometer has donated all the gauges, wiring, and sensors that we're going to need for this build, as well as the gauge clusters. Corbo has set us up with an awesome set of Forza seats, five-point racing harness, and all the brackets to go with it. So that'll keep us nice and safe on the track. Um, Fast Wheels has donated a set of their Royale wheels uh, that are set up with a set of Hankook RS3 tires that were donated by Simply Tire in Toronto. Um, what else am I missing here? I've got Turbo Smart. They built us a custom wastegate, external wastegate with a 40 pound spring in it. Uh, it's the first one they built to those standards, so really want to thank them for that. Um, Nitrous Express donated a 15 pound bottle as well as a dry nitrous system that's good for up to 150 shot, although I don't think we're going to be using quite that much. Um, RTM has donated a full set of adjustable end links to go on our Eibach sway bars as well. So that'll hopefully uh, stop the car from moving around too, too much while we're drifting. And I'm trying to think anybody else. Uh, oh, Nishimoto has donated a rad oil cooler, um, some lines and their 12 inch fan to keep this thing cool. We'll be trunk mounting that. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got a couple other local sponsors. Moose Delaney's in Huntsville is going to be catering the whole weekend. And Muskoka Roasteries has provided us with enough coffee to keep everybody going the entire time. As well as our local Fastenal has allowed us to raid their parts bin and pick up any fasteners, nuts, and bolts that we could need. Um, as well as all of our OEM replacement parts came from uh, Auto Parts North also in Huntsville. So thank you for that, guys. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of companies on board. We also have a lot of companies that donated money to sponsor some panels on it. So you'll be seeing those graphics go on with our livery a little bit later once the car is wrapped up. I uh, didn't want to add them on quite yet because we didn't want them to get damaged during the process of building it. So yeah, I think I've covered pretty much everybody. And uh, yeah, we just want to thank all of our sponsors and thank you guys for watching this. It's going to be a pretty insane build. 
So stay tuned, make sure to check out all the other parts that are going to be coming out right after this one. With the car on the hoist and more or less gutted, we set on removing the lower subframe and all the suspension components. Because we got all new energy suspension bushings, every single suspension component needs to be removed so we can press the old bushings out and install the new ones. Fortunately, the guys at Northern Upfitters had offered to take the whole front assembly with them to their shop and press in the new bushings for us. With the front subframe being taken care of by Northern Upfitters, all we had to do was remove the rear subframe and push in the bushings there. Super simple when you're working with a team of professionals. Man, I, sure hope, a really long I sure hope my one friend Whoa. is watching this. Whoa. Whoa. Holy shit! Hey, yeah. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. man. I can't can freaking can see I go it. Down? Jack, yeah. Down Jack, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you can drop that side. Yeah, all right. All right. Okay. We're good. We're Sorry. Good. Sorry. I herniated everything from the waist up. From the waist up. You have off to like, you need to do mass herniate. Uh, 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 a mass herniate. Oh, God. Yes, we got this. We got this. Sorry, man. I couldn't really see it. Mass hernia. <laughs> mass hernia. Here. Three inch extension because you don't know what to do with six. Done. I'm not gonna lie, I think a <laughs> six inch extension probably would have helped him more. Oh. You wanna do toddler mode? I didn't get it. So get ready, guys. What's going okay. on? Should I have the song go be built? Should be coming very shortly. That's the one I'm gonna get the one. Jesus Christ, is there any paint left in there? Considering <laughs> well, I've got a gas tank in my way, uh, so we need to pull it. It is no longer a gas tank, it is now a fuel tank. Bring fuel no in it, it's still a gas tank, no diesel engine in here yet. Oh. Thanks, Ian. Hey, I told you to hang on to the damn thing. Just wiggle on this whole thing. Bring it back. Let me know to hang on to it. Hang on to it. Oh, okay. Don't spill the beer. Ian's new nickname is Jack in the Box. For the shop now. You're Jack in the Box. Hey, I said yeah. hang on to it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're, not, you're shopping with Jack in the Box. Whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at the Northern Upfitters shop, the guys started disassembling the lower subframe. New upper and lower ball joints were installed, along with fresh polyurethane bushings. The front hubs were removed from the old knuckles and installed on our new high angle drift knuckles. With that completed, all the components were then reassembled onto our new V8 Roadster's cradle. The 
Of course, then our completed subframe was brought back to Chris's shop where everyone was hard at work. While Jacob pressed out the old bushings from the rear control arms, Chris was working on a scoop system to bring fresh air into our Mishimoto trunk mounted rad. Here, your judgment opinion. Straight on like this, right? Yeah. Or slightly angled to try and diffuse to both sides of the rad. Because it's a longer rad than the opening. I like that idea. Try to push air to the, either side to try to yeah. cover the whole rad. Yeah, and then rad. you get a full... Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Full <laughs> spectrum. And while Chris was busy welding the trunk up, Jacob was under the car, fitting the new V8 Roadster's frame braces. Next up, Randy welds some quarter inch plates into the diff to lock it up solid. And with the freshly welded diff and a new front subframe mounted in the car, things were starting to look promising. That sounds sketchy at all. So need a socket that fits that nut. Give someone to eventually hand it to someone and someone will do something with it. I don't want to do anything with it. <laughs> Oops, careful. Fuck yeah, there's so much more room for activities in here. <laughs> but is there so much more room for a, for a Cummins? You'll find out on the next episode of Piston Head Garage! <laughs> Good segue? I'm using that. Yeah, you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, guys. So part one of the Soot Salon build has come to an end. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss part two, in which we actually try to fit the engine in the car. Um, I'd also like to take this time to thank Northern Outfitters, our title sponsor, um, as well as Vibrant Performance, Dave's Garage, and I'd also like to give a shout out to Randy from Chrome to Envy Customs. Um, he's an awesome fabricator. Make sure you check him out because he's done a whole lot of work on this build and most of it you won't ever even see. Um, of course, as always, make sure to give the video a like and share it with all your friends. I'm Garrett and I'll see you next time on Piston Head Garage.